Good day! It's still May 6th and I'm pruning shrubs and making a lot of little how to prune shrub videos but this video is gonna be something quick and updated on all the shrubs I have that you do not prune in the spring because most likely it's uh, flowering time or they're too young so let's go through them. This is a purple leaf sand cherry shrub it starts at the base there with two strong stems I've snipped away some of the weaker ones and it kept just the two and then the leader sh the leader um, stem is here and it, go it goes a little crooked which is why I have one of these sticking up just um, and because there's a lot of wind coming from the west so it kind of leans against there um, doesn't rub too much so it should be fine but I keep my eye on it anyways the reason why we don't want to prune away at this is because these lovely little buds turning into leaves and um, flower buds these will flower a white, lovely, whitish pink flower in the spring. And so if you prune this, you are pruning off the flowers. So if you want to prune it to shape and like keep it maintained because it, it is a, a vigorous grower, vigorous grower, then you want to uh, prune it after it flowers along with all the other shrubs I'm going to be talking about. In this area, we have a blue meringue lilac standard. It has a support because we've had so many storms this winter. I'm still scared it's gonna flop over. It actually, <laughs> if you look at my winter video on what happened here, it was flopped over like this, I guess the um, Velcro tab came off and it, it actually went right down and was completely hanging upside down. The whole tree, yeah. Good thing it's a baby and has some elasticity. So yeah, <laughs> I was really scared that I was going to lose a lot. I came in here uh, early, like really early spring when there was snow still on the ground and I cut off anything that was like broken off from the snow. Um, I just see that there's a little bit of dead here that I'm not too worried about. Um, I'll just snip those off later. So what you see are buds flower buds and you could see those flower buds starting in the fall so you know that those are for next year if they can survive the winter right if they don't dry out or nothing so like this like these buds dried out the ones on the end here so they did not formulate but luckily the ones underneath survived so all of these are lilac flowers and I'm just going to keep them on and whenever they bloom and they start to go brown, I will snip them right above their heads. Like, I'm sorry, right above, right under the flower head. And that will promote new growth because this is a blue meringue, is a variety in which it can bloom again if you snip it off and it, and it allows it to want to have to make more buds. <laughs> oh, there's my squirrel chaser. Okay, next up. And over here we have our native service berry shrub and oftentimes it's a, sh a tree with multiple um, trunks I guess so this could grow really 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 large um, but I'm going to maintain its width I do want it to grow really high but I'll maintain its width so yeah same idea it's actually already started flowering got some dappled light Maybe if I go up here. Oh, look at there's a little bee. Oh my gosh. How cute is that? He just having his lunch. So yeah, these flower white, delicate little flowers. And then it, um, just like the sand cherry, um, it does produce a fruit. Uh, this one is edible. Yeah, service berry. You can eat the berries and they are delicious and you eat them right off the tree or you can leave them for the birds and other wildlife up to you Oops. all right we have here a ginger wine nine bark how beautiful is that coloring it does change in the summer to more of a purple but right now oh, it's got this like copper beautiful copper leaf and it's kind of like the fall right and a little yellow undertone where its growth is oh so nice and the reason why I don't want to prune this nine bark is because well nine barks have kind of insignificant flowers in the first place like it does flower in the spring but that's not the reason why I am not pruning it it's because 
it has this wild shape, right? This wild curve out shape. And it's kind of like a pointier shrub. I don't want to like round it out or anything like that. So I want to be able to see that. So I'm just going to let it do its, let it do its thing. And it shouldn't, I forget exactly what the tag said, but I put it in the space and it was saying like, you know, it's probably like six feet high, five feet wide or whatever. But um, all coming from the base, like you could, you could prune the bottom to make that more narrow so you can still have like your lower lying shrubs, or lower lying perennials rather. And um, this part can go large and wild that way. So like back up. So you see like it can come out, you know, six feet high, like the fence. Is that a six foot high fence? No, must be like five feet high. And um, it, can, it can really like spread out this way. This is where I get super sad in this video, you guys. The winter snow we had was so intense that my globe cedar, okay, actually looks really good in this video, <laughs> but look, the globe cedar took a huge hit and made a hole here. The whole thing was splayed out flat, flat against the ground. It's so weird too, because it used to be in the front yard where um, snow piled from shoveling and it never had, you know, never missed a beat, it always stayed round. So now, I don't know what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have to like tie it here close it up somehow oh just like a big hole anyway yeah so i don't normally prune these <laughs> right your little globe but i i might tie tie some stuff together to try to support it and um it won't grow in the middle like that's not how the cedars work right they only grow on the, the outside so i have to tie it together Hair job um okay yeah moving on so next up oh, is oh whoops this, this was covering it it was over there but now i've i've moved it and the wind caught it and it um kind of oh <laughs> it kind of trampled my pulmonary it's fine it'll bounce um okay so this is the shrub it was covering i was covering this for multiple reasons and this is an azalea or rhododendron azalea type you know because like they have kind of different leaves there it is northern lights so it's supposed to be really hardy you know zone four it says and minus 30 nope that's fahrenheit minus 34 even better so i um i covered it anyways because of our crazy snow being so heavy and it would just break the branches i was worried about breaking the branches and second thing i was worried about these juicy um buds here these are flower buds they look different than than the um the buds that are for leaves right like that's a leaf bud that's a flower bud it is very juicy and i keep it covered i'm still keeping it covered to this day it's just getting a little sun while i'm outside because the rodents i have squirrels and they hate me and they just want to eat all the juicy buds mostly off of my like t uh, i don't have tulips because of them but uh, daffodils and alliums <sighs> yeah they like that anyways so i don't you obviously don't trim this in the spring because there are flower buds all over it not all over it like i have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirty like around 14 15 and the rest are um ooh, spider web the rest are just leaves it's around 15 flower buds and I want to save them I don't want them to get taken by squirrels because I've never seen this flower yet and apparently it's a beautiful coral pink so I'll probably be covering that up every night <laughs> with uh, that little cover thing like a little pop tent and it does that pop tent thing it advertises itself that it does allow light in and it does allow water but even then the water will kind of come through anyways uh yeah the next one is this vine right here i just leave that alone because it is oh the name of it oh let me i'm gonna have to look this up it's mandarin orange honeysuckle vine so that's this vine it's a honeysuckle it's um growing really really well and it gets morning sun and then shade the rest of the day. Um, well, I mean, I guess like more like afternoon, 
and it definitely has a lot of new growth. So um, the old stuff gets woody right there. That's woody. And then the new stuff is like malleable. <laughs> I really, I don't even know if I'm pointing. This is really malleable, this new stuff. So there's the woody stuff to the malleable stuff. And um, I think it's gonna cover up this whole back fence, which is like, right, the goal to hide the ugly, ugly fence that I have. Yeah. With the shrubs getting taller and that spreading, it needs to spread more on this side. And then my hydrangea in the back here, hopefully getting like six feet high cover up some fences. Now um, I'm going to cheat here and just explain to you that I do have these other vines. They're called clematis and I certainly didn't touch them. No, I did. I touched them. I, I, I just like snipped off the, um, the dead and dying disease stuff. Um, anything that was just dead. So I, I didn't do a video about it. Sorry. I just, one day it was like really gross out. I was gross. Everyone was gross. The nature was gross and I didn't want to do a video so I just snipped and trimmed and cleaned it up a little bit and um, brought it right down and there's lots of new growth this is like um the kind where you could trim it all the way down to the ground this clematis because you know like there's like one two and three well I think this is two the kind that you can either trim down or just leave it up and it'll you know old growth new growth whatever it just blooms on anything and it's also a rebloomer it's supposed to bloom in this um, early summer and again late August I've never seen it have its double petals it's supposed to have double petals oh this is a pilu pilu clematis I forgot to mention that uh, I've never seen it have its um, double petals but maybe this is the year I think I'm done with all of the shrubs that you are oh yeah well I guess mm -hmm. Okay, so this is my tiger eye sumac. It looks like a stick. Okay, can you see it? Wait, do you see that? It's a, it, it's a stick. <laughs> it's obviously, it's got growth. Like, I'm not worried. Sumacs are native here. I know this is a cultivar so that it's not as um, vigorous or it's like aggressive <laughs> as sumacs, right? They'll start suckering and popping up all over your garden. This one apparently doesn't do that. And so far I have seen no suckers. It has turned itself into a standard, which I didn't want because now I have two standards in the island. I didn't want that, but um, there was a storm and it broke off its secondary lower branch right there. So I have to cut it off and now it just looks like a standard. Anyways, um, I don't know if I'm supposed to prune it, but because it's just a baby, I'm not going to. Let me get a closer look. I just saw something. I was looking at this and I just saw a crack. Oh my God. Is it supposed to be there? That looks like damage. Ugh. It's like, it's like furry outside, right? And then there's this crack. Ugh. I don't know. I mean, there's buds, so I'm gonna say it's fine. Furry, it's so furry. Okay, so. I'm just gonna leave it and see where it grows. I did not expect like the they're very um long like leaf stems that like, kind of like you know what this reminds me of palm trees because these guys will create these huge palms that's what it looks like and they're kind of like lace leaf looking kind of like my uh, Japanese maple over there. They got this lace leaf and they got these huge things and the whole things will fall. I thought like someone had pulled them off or something in the fall, but I guess that's just how they lose their leaves. It's not like the individual leaves off the stem. No, it's the whole stem comes off like a palm tree. So that ends my do not prune it video. Um, Japanese maple, I didn't mention, and the laced up elderberry I have, I didn't mention because they're brand spanking new. Just looking around real quick, just looking around real quick. I have euonymus. I don't touch the euonymus. Uh, I just let it do its thing. I think that's all my shrubs. Okay, that's all folks. It was a lovely, lovely May 6th. I'm so happy it's nice out and that I'm done my show because it was taking up my life. Um, and now I get to garden, so yay see you on the next video. I'll probably just do like a tour of every perennial. 
until next time bye